Fedora 37 is finally here, or almost at least. But that didn't stop me from downloading it early and try out all of the new features that come with it. And let me tell you, there are a lot of awesome things in this release. But also some bad ones as well. So make sure to click that like button and also subscribe to the channel. If this is already your second time here, then this is a wake up call. Anyway, Fedora 37, a release that I've personally been waiting for. Well, of course, the biggest change is obviously GNOME 43. There also have been quite a lot of other changes to the operating system as well. Fedora Core OS, the minimal operating system specialized for containerized workloads, is now officially considered an official Fedora edition. Raspberry Pi 4 is now officially supported as well. Fedora gets a brand new installer in form of the Anaconda web UI, which hopefully further increases usability. NGPT on x86 and 64 systems is now the default. And let's be real, this one is way overdue. Of course there were a lot more changes, but let's just jump right to the main part. GNOME 43. And yeah, I've been awaiting this release quite eagerly. Out of the box, you might not really see much of a difference, unless you click here. Whoa! What is that? Not gonna lie, even though this new menu got some criticism, of course, I really enjoy the new menu once you get used to it after just a few days. And I bet that you will like it too. Not only does it finally come with a screenshot icon, which should help users who don't know how to take a screenshot before. It also features the ability to select your audio devices out of the box. And it was about time. When using a program with microphone access, you automatically get the microphone selection as well, which is kinda neat. The new button layout below is certainly inspired by some trends in the industry, but I welcome the changes, since it is good for touch screens, but also mouse control. The new dark mode toggle is really convenient for people who like to switch between light and dark mode depending on the time of day. And generally speaking, the whole menu basically screams ease of use. Good job! The next big change that you will notice is GNOME's default file manager Nautilus, which finally got its GTK4 overhaul. It looks nice and also works really well. The only thing that I miss personally is an empty button for the wastebasket, so that I don't have to right click and empty it manually. But that's just a side note here. Also, dragging the window can feel a bit confusing, because it looks like you could click the path window, which is not the case, so maybe don't make it look like an input field. Another new feature can be found in the privacy settings, whereas a new setting called device security can be found. In here you can see how secure your system currently is. In the future, they also plan to add in the ability to toggle certain features right here in the settings, instead of constantly having to change them in the UEFI. But for now, it is definitely better than nothing. And yeah, that's basically everything that you will notice when you regularly use GNOME. But there have been a lot of changes under the hood as well. Many older GPUs got support for direct scanout, which will certainly result in a small improvement of performance and latency. GNOME also now supports high resolution scroll wheels on both Xorg and Wayland, which should make scrolling feel a lot more controlled. Direct scanout is now supported for multiple monitors at the same time. This is huge for gamers, due to performance and latency improvements. This also accounts for off-screen rotated views. GNOME should now also remember the monitor scale when switching configurations, even though I really didn't notice a difference before. Nvidia with GBM now uses the atomic mode setting path, which basically is a move towards a more every frame needs to be perfect scenario. Now you all know on how I feel about this every frame needs to be perfect stuff, but it's still better than before. Screencasting was apparently improved by working around some problems in Pipewire and a lot of memory leak and bug fixes were applied. Are these things really noticeable? In many ways, yes. Especially direct scanout was a huge boost for me personally, since with my current setup, I previously had the worst case scenario. Now with the direct scanout supported on both my monitors simultaneously, Wayland finally becomes a viable option, because even with forced vsync, the latency is now similar to X11, or at least it feels that way. Sure, there is still some frame skipping going on due to Wayland's every frame is perfect concept, but my new GPU, which is pushing more than 144 FPS in a lot of games, is able to fix that issue. It really is a problem if you don't reach the desired FPS. Since not only are you already playing with lower FPS, the stuttering introduced by Wayland when a frame doesn't make it in time only makes it worse. I also welcome the high res scrolling support and of course the overall design. When you first try Fedora 37, it might not feel like a big upgrade. But if you take a look under the hood, then there were a lot of improvements regarding performance, latency and the overall compatibility. And that's where I not leave it. 
Because we're not quite done yet. There is one major, well, major problem. And it probably is going to affect older versions of Fedora as well. Fedora has officially removed the API hardware acceleration for H.264, H.265 and VC1 videos. What is the API, you might ask? Well, the API is an API, which allows the operating system to basically tell the graphics card that it should use hardware acceleration for videos. And H.264 in particular is still the default on the web. Now, as a regular end user, you might not really notice a difference at all, since you can still play these videos. However, the decoding is done by your CPU, which is not that great if you have a weak one. Especially if you are using cloud services on an older GPU that does not support the VP9 codec, you will see an increase in latency due to the CPU being much slower. I personally notice it because I cannot use it in OBS anymore, which is a bummer, since using my CPU basically cuts my frame rate in half when playing games like Apex Legends. Not good. However, this only affects AMD users. While Intel also uses Mesa, they have their own hardware acceleration solution in place, and Nvidia, well, has its proprietary driver. To my knowledge, AMD does not offer a proprietary solution on Linux, which means that it is unlikely to change anytime soon. But hey, if you're not a content creator and have a somewhat recent CPU, then this issue is not really an issue. And people are already working on the problem. So who knows, maybe in just a few weeks, we already have a workaround. So yeah, in conclusion, Fedora 37 is a really big release if we take a look under the hood. And for me personally, it is going to remain my daily driver. And now I'm done. So if you've liked this video, then definitely make sure to show it with a like and even subscribe to the channel. And while you're still here, you might also want to check out this video right here. And all that's left to say now is, good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.